Hello and welcome back to the Mono Living Podcast. Today I welcome Ibrahim. Thank you, Noah, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Ibrahim is our specialist in Creek Harbor, I would say, right? Yeah. Not only, I mean, Creek Harbor is your home, yeah, but <laughs> you have also some other areas you're focusing on. Uh, today it goes, the topic about this, uh, regarding this podcast will be secondary, marked in general, stories. I have questions for you, you have questions for me. So maybe let's start regarding yourself. What are you selling the most? So tell me about about yourself. Hi, everyone. It's actually a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm Ibrahim, just as Noah mentioned earlier. Um, I'm actually a senior real estate agent here working at uh, More Than Living. I've actually been in the real estate market for about like three years now in Dubai. It's actually been really exciting and also challenging at the same time because over the course of the years, I've actually had a lot of experience. I've learned a lot in the markets. The market is really crazy right now as well, as you can see. From the stats and figures that's actually been going on in Dubai for the past two years, we've actually been experiencing um, a high inflation of purchases and sell sales also so in the market. So yeah, it's actually been a very good time to actually be in the real estate here in Dubai. Okay. So we talk about the secondary markets. Um, what is for you, the, or why are you in the secondary market, not in the primary? Well, to be honest, right now, I would rather more or less say that um, a lot of people, a lot of buyers right now and a lot of inquiries that we've been having of recent are usually towards the secondary market in Dubai because a lot of people right now are more or less looking into instant returns in terms of their investments. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people prefer to actually go for units that are quite ready, stuff that actually can generate them more income immediately with no hassles. And um, a lot of people just, I don't think they have the patience to wait for the offline properties. And I actually think that secondary market is doing really good as compared to the primary market right now in Dubai. So yeah, that was actually a very good point as well to consider. Okay. Did you sold anything in off plan? Yes, I have actually quite a few in off plan, but more of my sales have actually come through the secondary market in Dubai. Okay. And then most of the time you're selling obvious in, in Creek Harbor. Yeah. Most of my transactions have come through from Dubai Creek Harbor as well. Okay. What was the craziest selling you had in, in Creek Harbor? One of the craziest sales I had in Creek Harbor was um, actually um, a four bedroom penthouse at um, Harbor Views in Dubai Creek Harbor. So the worth of the property was I think around 8.5 million dirhams, talking about about like um, $2.3 million thereabout. So it was quite challenging because the, um, the center is actually a funny one of the property. So the buyers were actually buying this property um, under their company name and not under an individual's name. So they provided all the documentations and everything because basically the buyer was not a resident of um, the Dubai UAE here. So the buyer had um, a POA in place for this transaction to occur. Mm -hmm. So the seller of this apartment actually knew about everything. Like I sent down all the documents. We had all the details and everything ready. We had all the forms signed, the form A's, form B's, the form F's, the MOUs were drawn, everything was done. Right until the day before the transfer of this property, the seller decided to try and back out from this deal completely by saying he is not going to attend the transfer and the deal should be cancelled unless the owner of the company, the sole owner of the company, which was not a resident of the UAE and which was not resided in the UAE, he requested their presence to actually be there at the transfer. Otherwise, he was out of the transfer, the deal completely. Oh, okay. And we had less than 24 hours to go. All documents had already been submitted to the trustee office. So he needs to fly into the company. He needed them to fly within a couple of hours just to complete the transaction. Otherwise, he was out. And so that was a huge challenge and one actually to deal with. It was quite a funny one because I had to rush down to the tr trustee office as well. I actually had a couple of words with them. They were like, they already have all the POs in place. It's already been approved by the Dubai court. So he has no rights to actually demand the presence of the buyers of this property as well. But he's been there or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay, crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, cool. Um, what do you advise for people that are interested in Creek Harbor, or mainly secondary? Well, truth be told, um, I'll actually give them a couple of advice because a lot of people have different misconceptions about the secondary market. I feel the secondary market um, actually has some advantages because first of all, you're talking about capital appreciation. like. Most of the projects that have been done in the secondary market are actually facing a lot of an, a high capital appreciation right now at the moment because the market is actually skyrocketing. Secondly, it also offers you um, lower risks than actually buying the primary market because um, you actually get to see what you're actually purchasing. 
you have a tour of it, you know the environment, you know the location, which is actually very key and important um, when you're actually buying in the secondary market as well, because prime locations actually offer you a very high capital appreciations. Yep. They also offer you a very high return on your investments. So your income is also being generated immediately. So you're not going to have to wait for like a year or two because once you get a property in the secondary market, even though you're not an end user, you're more or less like an investor, you have the chance to start renting it out immediately and uh, start making your money back. Oh, I mean, it's also in Dubai, it's a very transparent everything. Exactly. Because you can see, okay, what was the developer price? You can see the developer price. You can see the proven track records from and the Dubai land department, the previous yes. transactions that has been there. As so, well as the prices are not fixed in the secondary market. It's not like the primary market whereby you go to the developers and then um, there's just a fixed price with the payment plan that you have to go. Although some developers actually offer you a bit of discount depending on the down payment you do. In the secondary yeah. market, every single thing is actually negotiable. So based on like the previous transactions, you can compare the market price to actually the price you're being offered from the sellers directly. And as well, you can negotiate, although some sellers tend to be like their prices are non-negotiable. Uh, I don't believe that because everything in the secondary market is actually quite negotiable. 100%, especially yeah. when you have distressed deals or I have sellers that need to leave the country or something. Yeah, so a lot of factors actually come into play at that point. So I can tell you the craziest thing I saw in the secondary market, what? they bought in La Vie. Yeah. And um, it was three three transactions. Okay, the first person bought it from the developer. Yeah, sold it for four point eight. I, I think the number was four point eight to a um, to to the to the second to the first secondary buyer. Yeah, and the person I don't know what happened, yeah. but he sold it in the in the same month. I just saw the transaction, and the same month he sold it for eight point four. Wow. I mean, that's also another key factor that people actually tend to look at when buying in the secondary market, because a lot of people are actually looking at making their premiums. So that also plays a very key role in yeah. terms of like the secondary market prices. A lot of people, you might actually buy it because I do have this buyer. Actually, there's um, um, a very good client of mine that I've actually been working with. I know this guy, he has um, a lot of units. He's more or less like an investor. And what he does is he buys and flips. He's more or less like a flip investor. So he has yeah. multiple units. He goes for usually like distress deals or market prices deals. And then what he does is instantly when he buys, he just flips the units immediately with a very high premium of about 20% there about on the original purchase price that he got it for. How long is he waiting for? Like what, what's the, well, like, let's say he buys today. Yeah. How long he sold with you? Yeah. Okay. How long? Called his units. Yeah. Of course. So how long is he waiting? He waits, uh, waits for about like three three months thereabout and he instantly sells it and he actually makes okay. about like 40% profit. But then he needs to buy, he needs to buy in areas which are very high demand. He buys in areas that are high demand and he only buys the best layouts in every single building and the views are important yeah, yeah. for him. He doesn't, he doesn't just go for any kind of unit. He goes for what he knows is going to be very high in demand. True. So he chases that and usually he only buys from top developers such as Imara by themselves. Yeah. He doesn't do anything other than that. Amir as well. One, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's a point because 20% to your chief after some month, it's yeah. crazy. It's very good. That's a very good. Normally you wait a year. A year. Two. So wait for two years, some yeah. three years. Yeah. yeah. Or they actually flip it up. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's actually very good. Amazing. So what do you think? Um, I mean, we, we, we talked about already, it's very transparent. It's you very can see everything. Yeah, you can see everything. And, and, and that's why you know also uh, what's on going on on the markets. Yeah. So you don't pay for something where you don't know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And also one mistake that usually agents tend to do in the secondary market is um, they usually don't keep proven, they don't keep track of proven records, such as checking the market prices, the mm. daily market updates with what's available, what the recent transactions have been done. Because usually I tend to have some sellers of apartments that don't know anything about the market. They're probably like, they just own a couple of apartments in Dubai, but they're not really into the real estate. So whenever you approach them for their properties on whatsoever, they tend to ask you like, what would be the selling price? And that's a very good question to actually ask an agent because there you know whether the agent is actually credible yeah. to actually handle your property to sell it. Or you can know that maybe he's just a mainstream agent just like others because they're more than 10,000 agents in Dubai. And that's the difference. Yeah. When you have an area which you were focusing on. Exactly. I know that you know that I'm focusing on Beachfront. So whatever happening in Beachfront. You would know best. I will know course. best because I'm checking and this was always my routine. Morning, checking DX, uh, DX DXB, DLD, yeah. everything. What are the transactions? Yeah and uh what's going on on all the platforms exactly and then going in with the sellers and what's going on yeah. with the buyers of course that's the best way to actually prove your credibility in the market actually 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important as well for both buyers and sellers to actually work with credible candidates, credible agents that they know, actually know what they're doing, people that are professional, because there are a lot of agents that are not professional in the market. Because uh, in terms of secondary transactions, you also need a couple of documentations that need to be done, more or less in terms of like requesting from documents from the buyers, both the buyers and the sellers, like the yeah. title deed. Not only this, but everything. We talk also about the secondary when we when we have even not the property ready already. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about the service charges need to be paid from the seller before even the transaction. Service charges that yeah. are done, like a lot of agents you don't know about. Hearing, they don't know about anything about the service charges of the buildings, buildings or the locations they're actually going to. So you tend to have questions from the buyers, like, okay, what are the service charges here? And then you're stuck. Yeah, taking a look at them, and then you'll be like, okay. I'm going to have to check that and it'll come back to you, which that means yeah. you look very unprofessional. So you need to know everything prior to viewing with the buyers or actually the sellers of an apartment as well. Yeah. That's why we have the agents all segmented in in, in, in different areas. It is, so they so the most specialize in one. Yeah. Because right. needs to, you need to go the, the specialist. You need to know what's under the rocks. Exactly. And you need to know everything, everything. Thing, the location. You need to know the in and out, the access. You need to know the series of towers, to be honest, like the different layouts. Everything. I can just come up to you. Oh, okay, I need an 08 series in Dubai Creek Horizon Tower 1. You should immediately be able to know what view I'm talking about. You and which selling price. What kind of, how many bedrooms is it? You should be able to know what's the price of the market. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. That's going yeah. to be very important as well. True. So uh, what are some key trends you see right now in the market in the secondary? So basically, right now, key trends basically in the secondary market, what I've come to realize from the past year and the experiences I've had is a lot of people, mostly the buyers that are actually going into units in the secondary market, the main and the highest demand of buyers is the view yeah. that they're going for in apartments. Like you can have more than 10 viewings for an apartment with a buyer. And uh, if he doesn't see sees anything that wows him at first sight, he's usually not quite like caught but you can actually take um, a buyer to a very brand new building contemporary with all the state-of-the-art facilities amenities in the building whatever but he just tell you no because this has happened to me I've actually had um, a client that I had a viewing for a penthouse actually this was a rental just about like a year ago thereabout so we had over eight viewings for penthouses at um, Dubai Marina a Palm Jumeirah and Amar Beachfront as well so these were all like brand new buildings you can tell from the locations like we went down to Azizi Mira, we went down to Sunrise Bay, the Beach Vista, went down to Dubai Marina as well. So we saw a lot of properties but nothing actually caught their eye. But the very moment I actually took them to 5242 just at the entrance of the waters, regardless of it being smaller in size, although at first when they came to me and acquired they were like they need a larger space because they want to have like some sort of like privacy, they want to be able to work from home so they don't disturb each other and everything. I took them down to 5242 and the very moment they saw the full sea view with the Dubai Iron View and the uh, Blue Waters, they were like, nah, this is it. Cool. This has to be it. Yeah. I mean, it's always regarding the goal. Yeah. And exactly. what is your goal? You you invest, you, you're buying to live in? To live in. Or exactly. you buy for investment? For investment. And exactly. for to rent it out. Yes. That's the point. Because I have many, many buyers they they buy secondary. I'm obviously I'm also in the secondary market huh? uh, because they 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 either don't saw the project before or they don't have yeah, the money. A lot of people don't know about a lot of projects actually. They just maybe they've just heard a couple of projects or buildings from just maybe friends or family yeah. members or something. So they usually don't know what actually this building entails. Yeah, but I, I mean they didn't invest. Let's say three years ago when it was an off plan. Exactly. They, either don't know they don't, don't have the money exactly. or they don't um yeah don't have the money was the main thing or they didn't even knew about dubai exactly. and then they come to dubai and see the project was are already ready mm -hmm. and they love to live in into it exactly. or they directly want to have rent or then live in it three years after they rented it out exactly. so these are these are the typical clients i would say in the second yeah. i mean the typical investor in the secondary mm -hmm is a uh, distressed buyer certainly i would agree with that yeah for sure yeah because these kind of clients they just buy whatever is under the market price the market price we have a lot of them just send them whatever it is they buy straight away straight away that's the thing i i know even that we had the same client exactly when, when yeah. we got no to each other there 
that you, we we sold to the same client actually, yes, exactly. and mm-hmm. they are such kind of distressed buyers. Distressed buyers. So whatever I sold them uh, a one bed. I don't know what you sold them. Yeah, I sold them a two bedroom and a one bedroom as well. Yeah, all at pre cover and you sold them the one at MGL. Yeah. 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 So they they bought it also straight away. So the thing about this clients, they never even had a viewing. They didn't care about a viewing. Yeah. True. Anything. Yeah. True. Just send them whatever it is. They know it, they do their research, straight away, they're ready to go. I mean, it's also regarding the experience of the of the clients, you know? Exactly. To have a new fresh, peop- new, fresh people to sell them something in the secondary market is hard because you need to explain the whole Dubai exactly. story. You need to explain. What's going on. Yeah. But these kind of clients are they know the all, everything. Yeah. They, they know what's going on. They know what, because they've been in the game for quite some time, so they know everything in and out. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, maybe for the for the end of the podcast what do you think are the most important thing to buyers that they need to take care of when they buy in the secondary market first and foremost i feel like what buyers should actually take care of in terms of their purchases in the secondary market first of all they need to take a very good consideration of the market price to start with I think uh, it's uh, quite important as well. Like, l- let me crash. The first point I think is an agent who knows everything about this one area. Okay. Especially this one. Exactly. Area. Yeah. For yeah. sure. And maybe also go with a company, which has like when we use specialize in Greek Harbor, yeah. but we have other members they specialize in different areas. Different areas yeah. So everything exactly. belongs in one company. Yeah. Exactly. Like you have, I know that you have right now one one deal ongoing with one of our agents yeah and everything is kept together exactly and there is no communication lag yeah. so and then for sure what you mentioned as well is the 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 buying price and buying prices are very important because i mean if a buyer is actually not experienced or has no information might easily just buy at the wrong price to be honest because you can have their, their units right now there are some sellers that are actually inflating their prices doubling the prices 100 yeah. percent premium and if you have a buyer that has no idea or no information about the market right now and what is ongoing. You pay too much. You're just going to pay too much. And in the end, you're going to end up regretting like, okay, yeah. so I was actually like more or less done for this deal because this was not the price. I paid almost double and I could have gotten something better. I'm always, exactly. I sent always the client a very transparent list exactly. of what is the transaction in this exactly. tower about this unit. Exactly, about this unit. Because right now I'm going to give you a story because um, I have um, an exclusive unit with me. And Dubai Creek Harbor as well, a two bedroom at 17 Icon Bay. But the seller of this unit is not really aware of the market in Dubai because he doesn't stay in Dubai. So I came to him with an offer. I'm like, um, I have an offer on your unit. And he asked me, like, what's the price? And I gave him a price and he was like, that's too low. What? And I told him, okay, but that's the market price. Because if you sell it at this point for your unit, the series and the view of your unit, that is actually a very, very good price. And he was like, how would he determine that? And I sent him a proof. I downloaded the full report of the re- recent transactions that has been done yeah. for all the two bedrooms with all the series in the same building. And I showed it to him. I'm like, okay, you can have a look at this because the offer I gave to you is actually higher than the transactions you've seen over here in the market. Therefore, you can tell that you actually, and if you compare it to the purchase price that you actually bought this unit for, you're actually making a lot. You're making about 30, 40% premium, which is actually very good because if you were actually to sell this unit just six months ago, you wouldn't even be getting this price of the offer that I'm actually given to you. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually changed his mind, changed its insight about everything. So he was like, all right, fine and good, no worries. And um, he actually gave me the exclusivity of the unit and it's right there now. Amazing. For sale. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, this is the point of having a good agent. Knows everything about the market, what's going on in this area. Mm-hmm. Be transparent and try to... S- like convince him to whatever is right now good exactly convince them negotiation also you need to have a very strong negotiation skills when it comes down to the secondary market 100 exactly because it's very difficult with some sellers some sellers can be very lenient some can be very very difficult to work with so you just need to be ready for everything at every every single time that actually comes to you especially when you work with the seller and the buyer the buyer exactly this is the thing yeah so you're the one exactly that has to deal with everything and you need to sure. bring the person maybe up maybe down and, and maybe and down and try and have a balance yeah. in between of course it's very important i think the listeners yeah. have a good input uh regarding our knowledge <laughs> certainly i hope they do if they have any other questions they're free to actually contact us as well yeah feel free and um yeah thank you so much Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you, Noah. Thanks. Thank you. Have a very good day. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.